Welcome to the first of three videos on hypertension. The objectives for this lesson are to first define hypertension, second describe blood pressure, how blood pressure can change over time, and the proper method of taking a patient's blood pressure, and last we will learn how to diagnose and classify hypertension. A quick note, I will write blood pressure as BP and hypertension as HTN. This is notation that you might already be familiar with. So first, let's define hypertension. Hypertension is the condition when a person's blood pressure is chronically elevated over what is normal. So it's chronically elevated blood pressure. The key here is that this is a chronic condition. To put hypertension in a larger context, let's look at some stats that the CDC recently put on the epidemiology of hypertension. The CDC estimates that nearly one in three ad adults in the United States has hypertension. Further, nearly one in three adults has something called prehypertension, which is another classification that we'll get to later in the lesson, but it's sufficient to say right now that it's an elevated blood pressure. What's really scary about this is that of these people with hypertension, so if we had five people with hypertension, one in five don't know that they have hypertension. This is terrible. Hypertension is known as the silent killer. Hypertension is an insidious process that for years can go unnoticed until something bad happens, such as stroke or kidney failure. In 2009, hypertension was the direct cause or contributing cause of 348,000 deaths, which is about 1,000 deaths a day. It cost Americans in the in the United States healthcare system, $47.5 billion. So without a doubt, hypertension will be a large problem that you will see in your personal lives, your professional lives, and on your exams. So first, let's take a moment to understand what blood pressure is. Blood pressure is the force that is exerted on, the, on an arterial wall. So here's a schematic of the circulatory system, just for pers perspective. If we were to take a cross section of an artery and look at it end on end, we would see a large muscular tube. Inside is the intervascular fluid. Inside this area is called the lumen. And in the lumen is the intervascular fluid. And that fluid exerts an outward pressure on the arterial wall. That pressure is, is the blood pressure. Blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury. It's the units that we use. If we were to do an experiment and put a little sensor in the lumen of the artery and that was measuring the pressure inside the lumen, its graph might look like this. Here's time, and here's pressure. The pressure inside the lumen would be going up and down, up and down. When the heart beats and blood rushes into the arterial system, the pressure in the lumen increases. That gives us this high point, which is called the systolic blood pressure. In between beats, the pressure doesn't go to zero, it's still, there's still pressure inside the lumen, pressure on the walls, but that low point of the graph, also known as the nadir of the graph, is the diastolic blood pressure. These are the two pressures that we measure when we take a person's blood pressure, and it's always read systolic over diastolic. So if uh, you had a patient and you read their blood pressure is 119 over 77. We know that the systolic is 119, the diastolic is 77. We usually leave the units out, but you do know that it's in millimeters of mercury. 
It's important to note that blood pressure normally rises and falls throughout the day. And there are many things that you can do that can increase your blood pressure, such as having coffee, some medications, um, running upstairs, or I don't know, maybe you are a uh, world-class badminton player. All of these things could increase your blood pressure. So having a high blood pressure at one moment in time does not actually mean that you have hypertension. Like we said in our definition, hypertension occurs when blood pressure is chronically elevated over what is normal. So it needs to be over time. So with this in mind, let's look at how to diagnose and classify um, blood pressure and hypertension. So like we said, in order to diagnose somebody with hypertension, it needs to be over time. We usually say that there needs to be, excuse me for that, there needs to be four weeks between blood pressure measurements in order to say someone has hypertension. Which makes sense based on our definition because it's chronically elevated. Not a moment in time, but it's chronically elevated. So if Miss May, one of your patients, were to come in tomorrow and her blood pressure was elevated, would you say that she has hypertension? Yeah, probably not. You would say, Miss May, you need to come back in at least four weeks and we'll recheck. If your blood pressure is elevated again at that time, then maybe we would be more comfortable in saying that you have hypertension. A few other notes and when you take a person's blood pressure, you need to make sure that they're seated and that they've rested for five minutes. Because, like you know, many things can increase a person's blood pressure. The sheer stress of coming to the doctor's office could increase a blood pressure. So having them seated and rested for five minutes will give you more accurate reading. Also, don't make a rookie mistake. Make sure you have the correct cuff, the correct size blood pressure cuff. So we can classify um, blood pressure and hypertension using something called the JNC-7. JNC stands for the Joint National Committee on the Prevention, Detection, Evaluation, and Treatment of High Blood Pressure. Uh, side note, the JNC-8 recently came out in December of 2013. We'll use that when we talk about treatment of blood pressure. But the JNC-7 gave us these definitions. We have normal blood pressure, which is a systolic of less than 120, and a diastolic of less than 80. Prehypertension is systolic of 120 to 139, or a diastolic of 80 to 89. Stage 1 hypertension is 140 to 159 or diastolic of 90 to 99 and stage 3 is greater than or equal to 160 systolic or greater than or equal to 100 diastolic. Note, I don't have units on these but we know that the units are millimeters of mercury. So let's say that you have a patient, Fred, and Fred's in to see you. And last time he was here, he had elevated blood pressure. And today, again, his blood pressure is the exact same. It's 119 over 82. And you did everything correct, four weeks apart, seated for five minutes, and rested. So you really, you're, you're certain this is a good blood pressure. So what would you say? Well, we know that the 119 systolic is in the normal range, but the diastolic, 82, is in the prehypertension range. So what would we say? We'd say Fred has prehypertension. Fred's mom, exact same. She has um, uh, repeated blood pressures of 142 over 87. So 142 is in the stage one, 87, is in the prehypertension, the diastolics, what do we say? Well, we give her the worst. We say, sorry, unfortunately you have stage one hypertension. So you go for the worst diagnosis. This concludes our lesson. Um, next, we're going to take a look at the pathophysiology of hypertension.